Welcome to the uh, Sizeware on Mars presentation uh, here in the Sizeware booth. Uh, my name is Than Putzig. I'm a planetary geophysicist at the Southwest Research Institute. And today I'm going to show you how we are using Sizeware to understand the structure, stratigraphy, and the depositional history of the uh, Martian North Polar Cap. Um, we have uh, a radar instrument in orbit at Mars since 2006, and we're recording data on orbit tracks as we go across the, the uh, polar region. Um, and recently we've put the 2D data into a 3D volume, and this is a test volume playing in the background behind me. Um, first I'll show you some uh, information about the 2D work that we've done uh, previously with the lower coverage. Uh, go ahead and to, to the next slide. Um, here I'm showing an animation. Um, this is produced by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. It shows the MRO spacecraft, the dipole antenna of uh, Sherrod, the shallow radar instrument. And this is an artist's rendition of the radar signal, which uh, is transmitted in a sweep from 15 to 25 megahertz um, from the orbit altitude of about 300 kilometers. Um, we have a, about a 15 meter wavelength for the radio signal. And that gives us about nine meters vertical resolution in the subsurface. And the lateral resolution is about three to six kilometers. Um, but we can improve that with synthetic aperture processing um, to somewhat less than one kilometer resolution just in the inline direction. Um, so here you see the stack of layers. And th this is actual Sherrod uh, radar gram showing about a two kilometer stack of the layers um, and a, a fuzzier unit underneath it we call the basal unit. Um, so if you go on to the next slide, um, this will give you a little more orientation of where we are on Mars. 75 degrees north to the North Pole, um, a polar projection. Um, this image on the left is a mosaic of Mars Orbiter camera visible uh, images and then on the right is the elevation map using a laser altimeter on a different spacecraft. Um, so what we see here then is these white layers are the uh, layer, the, what we call the layer deposits um, on the uh, North Polar Cap. And surrounding them is a darker region which is dominated by sand dunes um, that extend all the way around the polar layer deposits. Um, so this planimborium is a high standing region it's about three kilometers above the surrounding area. Um, and in it are cut these uh, spiral, a spiral pattern of troughs, um, as well as a large chasma here called Chasma Boreal that, that cuts in and separates the main lobe of deposits from this uh, southern lobe we call Gemina Lingula. I'll show three images uh, from this, uh, these locations. Um, so on the next slide, are the images. Uh, so these are high resolution uh, images from a camera on the same spacecraft. Uh, that's about 500 meter scale bar. And these are those finely layered deposits in the upper part of the section. Um, the red coloration is due to the inclusion of dust from the atmosphere. This center image shows the finely layered deposits overlying the basal unit. That was that fuzzy unit at the base of the radar gram. Uh, so this is the contact point, and you can see sand, dark sands, eroding out of the basal unit. This basal unit is thought to be the source for all of the sands that surround the big uh, uh, stack of layer deposits, and this is what those dunes look like. They're quite large uh, sand dunes. Um, so on the next slide um, it is a, another view of the polar region, again, now with a shaded relief map in the background, subdued and an overlay of the orbit tracks of the spacecraft from which we um, obtain the radar grams. So it's like a big 2D survey of, of radar grams in a spiral pattern. And it spirals because the, the orbit's actually in a fixed local time, but the planet is rotating underneath the spacecraft. And it builds up this uh, pattern of, of um, observational tracks. We had about 358 um, to work with back uh, several years ago when I did the initial mapping work with the 2D uh, volume of data. I'll show you this in the next slide, this radar gram here, which runs from the main lobe across this flat saddle region and then off of Gemma and Lingula here. Next, please. 
Um, so this is the radar gram in two views. The first view is the time uh, delay radar gram. So the scale bar here is 10 microseconds. Um, again, remember we're in the radio range here. So in the seismic world, um, all of this would be within like a sample. Uh, <laughs> And also, our, our spatial resolution or spatial uh, scale is quite large too. This is a 100 kilometer scale bar. Um, so we use the seismware to do the interpretation of these layers in the interior of the polar layer deposits. And there's a, a sequence of strongly uh, reflective layers and then a quiescent zone, and that repeats itself down through the stack. Um, the lower uh, panel here is showing the same radar gram, but now depth converted. Uh, to do the depth conversion, when we assume a velocity um, of water ice in the subsurface, um, and this produces this extremely flat-lying basal return here, um, which you also see up in here. Um, and this came as a little bit of a surprise. We were expecting more of a lithostatic compensation of this load. Um, and I, I could talk after the presentation about that in more detail if anyone's interested. Um, but we also see the termination here of this basal unit, um, which only underlies a portion of the polar cap. That was known from visual images, but exactly where that was was not well understood. Next, please. So these are maps then created from those interpretations um, in sizeware. Uh, so th this is a thickness map here on the top. These are all thickness maps. And this one shows the, the total thickness of those layers overlying the basal unit. Um, and then if you strip those layers off, then you can produce this elevation map here, um, which shows the basal unit and the surroundings. Um, and we can now very easily delineate where that basal unit is in the subsurface across here. Um, the, the green line for reference is where people thought it was just based on the visual surface uh, imagery. Um, in addition, we find a uh, very interesting feature here within the ice, uh, a synclinal feature uh, that's been termed a paleochasma. It's of the same scale as the uh, um, uh, chasma boreal that's cut into the uh, current surface. Um, but in this case, it's buried, completely buried in the ice. Um, we'll see more of that with this uh, animation. Um, so I mentioned the, the cyclic nature of these layers. Um, we believe that there's uh, a correlation between this, these layer sequences and climate cycles on Mars that are driven by the um, changes in the orbital behavior of the planet over time. Uh, over the course of several million years, the uh, orientation of the, the pole um, changes uh, quite a bit. It can go up to like 45 degrees off of straight up or, or back to zero. And this causes a big uh, change in the amount of light that reaches the, the polar regions. So this trace here is showing from the current day back 10 million years, the amount of solar insulation that the pole is receiving. Um, and so it, it varies quite a bit. And then there's a big jump here in, in later time to a much higher level when the, when the planet's rotated over and all the ice is probably gone at that point. So we believe the cap is about four and a half million years old and that we can correlate these layers to uh, climate cycles on the, on the planet. Next, please. Um, so just to summarize that 2D work uh, from earlier, um, we're able to uh, confirm a bunch of expectations that we had from just looking at the surface features. We've revealed a bunch of new features, and then we've raised some new questions about the, um, the nature of layer deposits. Um, these features um, and how they evolve over time are closely tied to the climate history, and we think that's been made pretty clear by the radar results. Um, and we feel that uh, with more data volume, at, at which we've acquired now, um, we can do a 3D analysis of this volume of data and be able to f find out a lot of new and interesting things about the polar layer deposits. Um, so next, please. Uh, 
so we've begun this 3D work by taking a now a much larger number of um, radar grams and pulling a subset of those to do some testing of the binning and migration process in the 3D world. Um, so this is the subset we're using for those tests uh, that all the orbit tracks that cross this box. Uh, next, please. Um, there, it's not as simple as just pulling all the data and, and throwing it into a bin. Um, there's a number of complications, including um, things you don't get on the Earth, really, uh, since you tend to acquire your seismic data at the surface. Uh, at Mars, the, the orbiter is above the Martian ionosphere, and that's causing delays that vary along track and from one track to another. Uh, we had to figure that out and take all of that out before we could make a 3D volume. Um, so I can go into more detail on that after the presentation if anyone's interested. Um, so as far as the 3D binning goes, um, in order to uh, do the interpretation work, we need, need to fill in this um, grid that uh, was relatively sparse with just this test data set. Um, so we did a, a triangulation, binning, a bilinear interpolation, and amplitude regularization to prepare the data for interpretation. Um, so you can see here a comparison of the, a time slice uh, before and after the interpolation work. Um, next. All right, so now I'm going to go over to this uh, 3D Viz um, uh, live demonstration of the Sizemore product, 3D Viz. And here we're above the, the surface of the polar layer deposits, just now getting down into the upper part around the main lobe here. You can see geminal lingual building out in here as he scrolls up and down. Um, you see these, these um, spiral features here. These are the subsurface expression of those polar troughs. Um, and we, uh, these are very important features they tell us about how the, um, the polar uh, uh, layer deposits build up over time. Um, so we're able to track these in, into the subsurface, which is equivalent to back in time. Um, and uh, in much greater detail with this 3D volume. Um, scrolling down a little deeper into the data set, um, over here you can still see Chasma Boreal cutting out this, this area, but across the saddle from that, you see a oval feature here. As he slides up and down in the volume, you can see that that is a synclinal feature. Um, and in fact, if you map it out, it's a, a big subsurface chasma of the same size as Chasma Boreal that was subsequently filled in with ice. Um, this is a completely new find from the radar data, and it has important implications for the evolution of the polar cap over time. Um, if we scroll down a bit further, um, I mentioned the basal unit and the fact that we weren't sure exactly where it was in the subsurface. At this level, uh, down in the, near the base, we, we can see the edge of that basal unit right in here, very, um, very well, we can map that out in great detail in this 3D volume much easier and, and more accurately than we were able to do with just the 2D collection of observations. I'd like to take a minute to thank uh, those who helped make this happen. Um, Sizeware, of course, for providing access to their two world-class software. Um, Halliburton uh, for support of the uh, processing that we did for the 3D volume and are still working on in Promax and SciSpace. Um, my co-investigators on the 3D imaging project, uh, Fritz Foss, who's here with us and can answer uh, questions about the 3D processing. Uh, Bruce Campbell at the Smithsonian Institute, Roger Phillips, who's at the Southwest Research Institute with me, um, and also NASA and the Italian Space Agency who built and operate the radar instrument, um, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter Project at the Jet Propulsion Lab, and the entire Sherrod instrument team who uh, are critical to collecting this data and processing it and making it available uh, for the work that I've shown here. Thank you.